What is up everybody? Today I'm going to be showing you how to effectively use waves and also blobs in your UI design. So there's also two different tools that will help you achieve these very quickly. I'll show you them right here. So this one allows you to create just random wave shapes. I uh, and obviously you click this to toggle them. I'm going to show you not just how to use this, which is fairly simple, but also how to use them in the context of user interface design. The other one is blobs here, and it's the same concept really. It gives you a few different options to create these blobs, and I'll show you several different contexts in which you can use these blobs. Now, if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe. Also, if you're curious about what's happening, that new background is in construction. So don't judge me yet it's going to be really cool anyhow let's get started now wait one moment we're about to embark on a little bit of ui design now if you're not very comfortable with ui design and you really want to level up your game you definitely should check out my ui design bootcamp at scrimba.com at scrimba you don't just watch videos no 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 you're actually able to modify code in the browser while you learn my course on UI design features over 100 lessons that are specifically tailored to help you become an awesome UI designer, and they're packed with interactive challenges. All right, so definitely check out the very top link here in the YouTube description, which you'll get access to my UI design bootcamp, but also many other courses for a low monthly fee. All right, so let's say, for instance, you have, uh, you know, a let's just assume there's a hero section or something up here, or it could be just another section of a landing page or whatever, and you have a section right here where I'm for some reason I'm just calling it waves because it's going to get wavy in a second but I uh, as you can see the way you separate out sections um, sometimes you can have different background colors uh, to help define that given section it could be like a testimonial section or like a features blip or you know whatever um, you can you can also opt to, to not physically structure these sections uh, based on a background color you could just you know make all this stuff darker and just to kind of have your sections kind of open-ended uh, but let's say uh, you want something a little bit more interesting um, instead of just having a straight line defining this particular section of the layout uh, that's where the waves uh, can come in so here it is getwaves.io it's a nice interface uh, and it just gives you a preview down here based on the settings you specify up here so obviously if you want to have more crazy lines like this you can do that uh, it also allows you to change a few other things here the bezier curves uh, obviously are more wavy um, you can change the color and all that good stuff uh, but generally speaking I would say if you're trying to use this particular effect for helping define sections of your layout I wouldn't go crazy over here this is just too much I uh, you want something real simple uh, something that you can work with and of course when we get it in there as an SVG we can start to move it around and manipulate it uh, based on how we need to um, so I'm just looking at something that's real simple so something like this would be perfectly fine so then we click this button you can copy the SVG code uh, if you're dealing in the front end um, or if we're dealing in just UI UX design in some sort of app like uh, like Figma or XD we can just drag that in. So this is on my other monitor you don't see, but I'm just gonna take this, drag it up over here to the side, and here we go. So now what we do, we'll scale it up here to get it into the right position, push it down, make sure it's the same color, and there we go. Now if you don't like this, we can make it larger, shift alt and just uh, drag out, and then we can also kind of play around with uh, the rotation. And so now we've gone from something like this, which is standard. It's not objectively any better or any worse. It's just kind of like a subjective design preference. And it's also based on, uh, it has to do with branding as well. Um, this obviously, cookie cutter, straight, simplistic. This, a little bit more fun if you think about it. Um, and also you kind of want to make sure you get things aligned here correctly so that there's not too much white space in a given spot. So if I switch to my layers here, uh, I want to make sure this is all the way to the back and I can bring this down, maybe bring this one down as well quite a bit. And then I, yeah, somewhere like this. And then we could also double click into here to gain access to these uh, anchor points here and just push these down as well. Uh, so that the effect isn't too, um, like I said, doesn't leave too much white space uh, in, in any 
one given area. I'm still not kind of happy with this because look at all this white space here. Um, so I may want to take this, push it down, and that's a lot better. So there's a, obviously a lot of different shapes and different, you know, you could probably maybe add a, a couple more um, and make it a, a tad bit more complex based on the app. Uh, the app settings right here, like maybe push it out here. Now we have a few more. And then of course you can always just edit, you know, you can go into these anchor points and we can, we can push things around, we can move them and just give us a nice sort of interesting aesthetic. All right. So outside of that, let's talk about the blobs. All right. So I have another example down here, right here, extremely simple, kind of boring um, looking landing page. All right. How can we use a blob in this context? Well, we can use it in several different ways. I'm going to show you a few different ways. So the other one is blobmaker.app, all right? So when you refresh, you're gonna see it's just gonna kinda give you a random uh, sort of blob shape. So if I push this over here, it's gonna give us more anchor points based on the Bezier curves. And over here, it's gonna be way more simplistic. Again, probably the same sort of uh, concept I, I'm working with here uh, as, as the, uh, the waves one. Um, the more sort of uh, anchor points that you, you allow it to have, the more potential for it to just look strange, if that makes sense. Um, although these still right here, even on the right side, are still looking pretty decent. So it's all a matter of just chance, really, until you get something you like. Now over here, this is where it's uh, you kind of have more straight, or I, I guess you could say exaggerated curves, or Bezier curves. Uh, over here, it's going to be a lot more simplistic. So you could tell this is not a perfect cir circle. It has some sort of interesting shape. Let's just use this one. So right here, I download. You can also get the code as well if you're dealing in the front end. And we'll take this and let's just bring it over here. Let's scale this up, right click, send it back. And look at that, I, I barely even have to mess around with this. And of course you can really start to fine tune things if you wanna see more of the blob less of the blob, so to speak. Um, let's get a different color here. I really like this uh, purple color that I have up here in this home. All right, and so you can also add other shapes on top of it, you know, just geometric shapes. This is more of like you would call graphic design. I uh, So you're kind of uh, playing the role of a UI designer, but also a graphic designer. So maybe we have like a, a circle there, and that's what, 13 for the size. Um, maybe over here, we'll add just like a cross, like a little cross shape, <laughs> 13. Maybe that's a little bit too thick. Come down here, maybe we'll make this black. I uh, take this, duplicate it, and we will rotate it. Where's my rotate? It, just, it doesn't give me the uh, little rotate thing. What, what the heck, Adobe? Unreal. Now it's not going to be the same width. Okay. You get what I mean, though. Uh, so maybe that's too big. Scale it down. So you can just start to add little graphic effects. Here's another one. I'll do one more. <coughs> oh, excuse me. This is a po popular one. Just hit shift, but to, to create. Uh, a bunch of 45 degree angle lines. And maybe we'll make this one um, an actual color. And we wanna get this color contrasting good enough. There we go. Maybe make that a little bit bolder. Maybe we'll, left, or we'll line it to the right side of this image. And of course, you could just keep on adding interesting shapes. Maybe duplicate this over here. Maybe make this one a little bit lighter. And just do fun things like that. All right, so uh, obviously we went from this sort of design where it's pretty just bland, pretty boring, now to something like this with this help of the blob. Uh, we can also 
use a blob in a different context. So for instance, um, we duplicate this. We'll take, let's take a, well, let's, let's, it's, let's use a new, a new one right here. So let's take a, see if we can get a different sort of design. All right, now I'm just being too picky. Eh, something like that. Let's do that one. Okay, so that's, that one looks pretty cool. So we'll take this. Um, I'm going to move it or drag it over rather. Blob four. So here's another approach that we could take. Send it back. All right, and then we will if you're gonna have type on top of it, of course, maybe we can make it more of like a watermark. So for instance, we can come over here and make it really tinted uh, light, something like that. Now, it may be a little bit too much in this context because we already have a blob over here. Although, because this is a watermark, it's not that big of a deal. Um, so I could just get rid of that and this and maybe have something a little bit more interesting over here, but the focus is, is, is you know, for the purpose of this exercise is that uh, we have this over here and it's, it's, it can add as like a watermark essentially. So you can actually have type on top of it. Um, another final way I'm gonna show you how to use these uh, is really cool. So um, what we can do is we can take one of these blobs and make it a major part of uh, the layout in terms of uh, how it's structured. So let me show you what exactly I mean in that context. So basically, we'll take this blob and let's use that purple color. All right, let's really increase the size. All right, so maybe we can rotate this a little bit, trying to find an angle that might work quite well. Maybe right there, really increase it. All right, now we'll take our foreground text, of course, because this is a, a darker background, we'll make it white. All right, I, so that looks kind of cool in and of itself, and of course this could be a real you know fine game of positioning your elements here so that they, they look good. Um, what we could do furthermore is, maybe we'll stretch this down. Um, let me take this section that we had up here Copy that, paste that. Let's scale this down. And so this could be the beginning of a new section right there. And of course, at this point, I'm just kind of having fun. Um, we could also, uh, let me copy something off screen real quick. All right, uh, what size is that, 40? We'll make it same over here. So as you can see, this actually looks uh, kind of cool. Maybe we'll, we'll align this up. So not perfect, but as you can see, I, I busted out a really interesting layout really quickly just by using one of these uh, uh, blob shapes. And it looks really unique. It's something you know that you don't see every day. Um, you can actually take this further, so if we, duplicate this and then we'll duplicate it one more time so we now we have three copies now we can use these path tools to create a kind of like a secondary interesting shape so for what I'm talking about let's just make this a little bit darker let's just move this maybe right here now I'm going to select both of these shapes and choose right here which is intersect so now I could take that new shape it created and I could kind of create, I could play with the tint and also I uh, basically lightening it or darkening it um, or even possibly changing the hue. And in order to create kind of a, it more interesting shapes out of that single shape right here. Awesome, awesome stuff. All right, hopefully you enjoyed that. Just a quick little tidbit of a UI design video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys real soon. Goodbye.